What's up guys, it's Tealus here. Welcome back to Dreadscar Rift. It's been quite a long time since we were actually back in this uh, class order hall for the Warlocks. Uh, I think it was like the third video I ever did was Destruction Warlocks, and I've been waiting for uh, the stability of Affliction and Demonology to kind of uh, level out so that I can bring them to you. So that is what we are doing. In this video, I am bringing you Affliction Warlock, all of the changes that will be coming to Affliction Warlock in World of Warcraft Legion. Uh, in this first video, we will be looking at the abilities that have changed for an Affliction Warlock. They're removed, changed, and new abilities. And then in the second video, we'll be looking at the PvE and PvP talents coming to an Affliction Warlock in World of Warcraft Legion. Also in this video, we will be looking at the artifact weapon that is available to an Affliction Warlock. You can see it on my back there. I'm not quite sure the name of it. Let's go ahead and pull this up. It is called Ultalesh, the Deadwind Harvester. That's a pretty epic name. That is the cool scythe. Uh, you have on your back, I'm, I'm gonna guess it's classified as a staff. Yes, it's classified as a staff, but it's a big scythe looking thing. It's pretty awesome. So, that is your artifact weapon. We'll get to that later in this video. But at the beginning of this video, let's go ahead and go through uh, the changes to abilities for Affliction Warlocks. Now, I did say in the Destruction Warlock video, at least I remember saying, this is quite a while now, um, that I felt that Destruction Warlock was one of the least changed classes. Uh, specs in World of Warcraft Legion, if not the, you know, the, one of the least changed, uh, definitely for Warlock. Uh, I may have been wrong about that because uh, Affliction Warlock, I think, is possibly even less changed than a uh, Destruction Warlock uh, because it's uh, at least its resource, which uh, you know, Destruction Warlock switched to Soul Shards. Uh, soul shards are still a mainstay for Affliction Warlock, so nothing has changed there. However, I will say that the playstyle of a an Affliction Warlock, uh, I feel, has kind of shifted back towards a little bit more towards the way Affliction Warlock used to play in Wrath and in uh, Burning Crusade a little bit. I'm not an expert on Warlock. Uh, after Rogue, Warlock is my worst class in terms of knowledge base, but that is the impression that I have gotten from uh, looking at, you know, through the abilities and so forth, is that it's kind of returning to how things were, uh, how you would play an Affliction Warlock back in World of Warcraft, uh, Wrath of the Lich King, and Cataclysm, and Burning Crusade, you know, the older expansions. So, let's go ahead and get into the uh, removed abilities. First off, Dark Intent has been removed. Uh, not really sure why Blizzard removed that this, uh, but they just took it out of the game. It is no longer available. Uh, Dark Soul Misery has been removed. Uh, no longer have access to that as a as an Affliction Warlock. Demonic Circle Summon and Teleport have both been removed. They are now talents that you can get. Uh, so we'll get in that get to that in the next video. We'll take a look at uh, you know where you can actually get Demonic Circle back uh, because I know PVPers would really want that in their arsenal, and even some PvEers, uh, there are a lot of great uses for it in PvE, being able to move move, uh, you know, through the battlefield against the raid boss uh, very quickly, uh, get that last little bit of damage off, etc. You're not going to be able to, you're still going to be able to do that if you choose to pick up the talent. Uh, this is where things kind of get uh, different with, uh, with kind of Affliction Warlock, and they, this is where it really goes back to its old roots, like Burning Crusade roots, really far back. Uh, Drain Soul, has been removed, and I know people felt like Drain Soul was like iconic, uh, and I know they were they were Warlocks were really pushing to keep it last uh, last expansion because last expansion they took it out, and then everyone was like, no, you can't get rid of Drain Soul. That's like our iconic ability as an Affliction Warlock, and now they basically said, well, no, we're just taking it out now, and you can still get it back as a talent. However, Drain Soul is being taken out as a baseline ability. Uh, same thing with Haunt, so this is the big one that really kind of changes, um, you know, the play style of an Affliction Warlock. Haunt has been removed, it is now a talent, uh, that you can get into, uh, you can choose, uh, to add a party to rotation, uh, I believe it's changed a little bit, it's not quite the same as the old Haunt, uh, and actually Haunt and Drain Soul are on the same talent here, so you're only going to be able to choose one or the other. Other abilities that are gone, Soul Swap, uh, Soul Burn, and Soul Shatter, three souls. We're losing a lot of souls here. <laughs> um, in terms of abilities, uh, 
and those like uh, abilities like soul burn were kind of integral in you know the new affliction warlock a uh, haunt soul burn these abilities were very much ingrained into what the new affliction warlock was i would say uh maybe late cataclysm uh miss pandaria affliction warlock and so this is what i'm saying when i say we're kind of going back to the old affliction warlock of burning crusade and wrath lich king with that uh three other abilities that have been taken out blood pact has been removed uh all baseline stat buffs have basically been removed i'm not sure actually uh they may have put it back on the imp let me go ahead and just raise an imp here so we can uh, double check and uh make sure that that is not the case uh they may have put it back on the imp which we can check here in a second i do not see it though so um it is completely gone uh, soul harvest has been removed uh i believe completely from the game i just want to double check real quick and make sure that it's not uh somewhere in the talent tree uh i don't see it as you can see haunt and drain soul are in the same talent here right in the beginning here so that's something that we will get to in the next uh in the next episode, looking at the uh, different uh, talents that you will be able to have open to you. Uh, Soul Swap, if you've noticed right there, is actually in the PvP uh, talent tree. However, uh, I'm not sh quite sure if it functions exactly the same as it used to before. And then the last one that is gone is Eradication. Uh, so Soul Harvest is gone, and then Eradication is gone. Eradication was a, a stat buff, basically. Uh, so there was really no reason to have eradication and they just decided to take it out uh, because they've taken out those flat stat buffs or just plain buffs like blood pack across all classes so really it's it's not lost like mark of the wild's gone arcane brilliance is gone so i wouldn't really worried about that moving into changed abilities uh the first change ability is agony uh, you're gonna see a lot of um duration changes uh throughout the dots for an affliction warlock and I think that's, um, I'm not quite sure why they're doing this. Uh, I think it's possible that they're trying to make rotations more interesting or they're trying to make it easier, uh, not not uh, too awkward. So they're like, uh, I want to say de-awkwarding, but that's not even a word. They're trying to make it less awkward uh, in terms of your rotation, but at the same time, they're trying to you know put more in a rotation instead of putting your dots there and then just sitting there like spamming uh, you know, drain life or whatever you did. Uh, you, I think it was possibly drain soul. Uh, instead of just sitting there spamming drain soul all the time, uh, you'll actually be more engaged with like putting your dots up. Now, uh, so agony is the first one. It now lasts 18 seconds down from 24 seconds. Functions generally the same. You put it on there and deals damage. Uh, it can generate a soul shard per tick. Um, so corruption used to do this. And it no longer has the ability to. Agony now has the ability to do this. Uh, I'm not quite sure why they changed this. It could be because uh, Agony now lasts uh, longer. Agony is the longer lasting uh, dot than Corruption. So they felt that it should be on the longer lasting dot. I'm, I really have no good answer as to why Agony uh, now has it and Corruption does not. With that being said, Corruption has been changed. It now lasts 14 seconds down from 18 seconds. So Agony is now your 18 second uh, duration dot. And then Corruption is now a 14 second duration dot. Now one thing to say about Soul Shards that uh, I haven't pointed out um, is that you no longer generate Soul Shards out of combat. Out of combat you would generate up to 4 Soul Shards and you would have max at full sh 4 Soul Shards. Now, you actually have five Soul Shards. Um, I can't remember if there was an enhancement in Legion. I mean, in Warlords of Draenor, that gave you five Soul Shards baseline. I'm pretty sure there was, but I cannot quite remember. Um, but now it's baseline that you have five Soul Shards. Uh, no matter what, you have five Soul Shards. And it will automatically regenerate one outside of combat, but it will not go beyond that. It'll regenerate one, and then it stops there. Whereas in World of Warcraft, Warlords of Draenor, just an expansion ago, it would passively regenerate your soul shards out of combat. That is no longer going to be the case. It instead, you're going to have to just get one, and then you're going to have to build them up when you're inside combat. Inside Demon will no longer reduce Demon Haste by 30%, so there's a change there. Uh, it's This is actually across the board. So any type of ability that has been like, you, know, you take control of someone... Uh, they all had this like haste reduction by 30%. They've pretty much gotten rid of that for everybody. 
health funnel has been changed. You now sacrifice 24% of your health instead of 12%, so twice as much. And it heals for 200% of your health sacrificed instead of 300% of your health sacrificed. So basically what this does is it's going to cost your, it's going to cost more of your health, but you're going to heal more in return. Um, you may be like, well, wait a minute, you know, I, you just said that it heals for 200% of health sacrifice instead of 300%. Yes, okay, so it is a reduction. Uh, it would be a reduction in the amount healed if you were still only sacrificing 12% of your health, but you're sacrificing 24% of your health. So if you're thinking just in terms of how much health your demon is going to get, it is a buff uh, for the demon, and it's a nerf for you because you're having to sacrifice more of your health. Um, but if you think about it in terms of numbers, it can get kind of confusing. So just understand that you are giving 48% of your health, basically, to your demon, as opposed to the old 36% of your health to your demon. That is the change basically, if you want to, you know, boil down. Life tap will now cost 10% of your health instead of 15%. Seed of Corruption, its cast time has been increased by approximately 0.5 seconds. Um, on, I, I go with the numbers I see on live versus the numbers I see on uh, the beta client, and my live client was like 1.88, something like that, and here it's 2.31 seconds uh, for Seed of Corruption. Summon Demon, uh, so whenever you summon a demon, now actually costs one soul shard, but it doesn't cost mana. So it's actually going to cost a soul shard for you to actually summon your demon now. And that's probably part of the reason why they automatically do regenerate at least one soul shard for you, so that you have that um, at all times. But uh, you, uh, you now have to actually, you know, if you're going to switch demons, you have to burn it on that. Uh, summon Doom Guard slash Infernal, so either one of those. The cooldown for those two, they've been sharing a cooldown. Uh, they're sure cooldowns now from 10 minutes down to 3 minutes now, so you're actually going to be able to have those up a lot more, which is pretty cool. Very important change here, unending breath now increases swim speed by 20%. I'm pretty sure I did that haha -ha moment back on the Destruction Warlock videos. And then the last big change here is Unstable Affliction. It now costs a soul shard to use Unstable Affliction. So this is kind of, if I remember correctly, taking the place of Haunt. Haunt used to cost a soul shard. Uh, not the case anymore. Now Unstable Affliction costs a soul shard. It now lasts for 7.5 seconds, down from 14 seconds, so a big drop off in uh, its duration. It's no longer guaranteed to crit if it's dispelled. And then the soul shard can be refunded if the target dies in that 7.5 seconds. So there's a lot to that there. So just kind of uh, basically it's going back to... Um, now, I never really go through damage buffs or anything like that in these videos because those are really hard to track. I just try to give you like spell changes and everything. Basically, what you need to know because... I. I can understand if you're an Affliction Warlock, you know, losing Drain Soul, losing Haunt, you know, what do we do now? Um, basically, what it's going to be is you're going to have Agony on the target with Corruption, and then if you can, you will do an Unstable Affliction, and then it's Drain Life is what you're going to be using. Drain Life's damage actually has been increased pretty significantly uh, from what it is on live, and so that's what you'll be using uh, to do your abilities now. That is the difference from what it used to be. And uh, the difficulty is going to be keeping Unstable Affliction up while keeping your, uh, your other dots up at the same time. Uh, there's a little additive here for uh, Agony. Refreshing Agony maintains its current damage level, so it's trying to make sure, you know, you want to always... <laughs> if there's ever a dot you do not want to fall off, it's Agony, because once you refresh it, it will maintain its damage level. So right now it has a 10 by it. That's not how many seconds are remaining or anything. That is, it is now at, you know how uh, Agony increases damage over time. Uh, 10 is now the highest level. And as long as you keep refreshing it, it will always stay at that highest level. And that's how it basically functions. So with that being said, basically, uh, this is how you're going to be dealing damage now. You have your three dots. The Unstable Affliction is going to be up several... You're going to have to constantly keep the Unstable Affliction up several times. And then you'll use Drain Life as your main damage source. Um, I feel as though there's not enough stuff to spend 
on uh, soul shards i could be missing uh something somewhere but i've looked through all of the abilities i just i haven't found anything that really explains um you know why you are uh basically why uh soul shards just are not used uh as much as they used to be and i've gone through and almost everything costs mana and so forth and i mean i'm just going through it even here just again through one piece at a time trying to figure out where um, you might have to be using your soul shards and they just it really just isn't there anymore uh, the big uh, user of your soul shards is going to be your um, is going to be your unstable affliction now unstable affliction is a seven you know besides your summoning demons excuse me uh, and do remember that like when you summon a doom guard infernal I mean that's gonna be a soul shard as well right there so that's something that you have to pay attention to but uh, Unstable Affliction will cost a Soul Shard. And since it's only a 7.4 second cooldown, you will be burning through them a lot. But I feel like you're always going to be able to, uh, with an Agony on the target, you're always going to be able to uh, at least... Uh, you're always going to be able to at least have a Soul Shard up. I could be wrong. Uh, I, you know, it could be that uh, you never had difficulty with it. I, I could be wrong, but for right now, it just seems like you're you're gonna get to the point where you like always have five soul shards, and you're not gonna know what to do with them. Uh, so maybe I'm completely wrong, but we'll see how things go. With that being said, that's uh, we have two new abilities to look at. Uh, they're actually two passives, uh, so not very much in terms of passives and, and what changes with Affliction Warlocks. I really was not kidding when I said that this could be one of the least changed. Uh, classes slash specs in World of Warcraft Legion. First is going to be Secret of the Necrolite. Your drain life is mass massively empowered, dealing 200% increased damage, but not healing. So um, this is what I mean when I say drain life is really kicking out power now. And then lastly, Soul Leech. I know this is the same name that comes from uh, your old talent tree on Warlords of Drainer. However, it does function a little bit differently. All, uh, all single target damage done by you and your minions grants you you and your pet shadowy shields that absorb 13% of the damage dealt for 15 seconds up to 15% of maximum health. So there's a lot there which is pretty cool. So with that being said that's pretty much everything for Affliction Warlocks. Um, there really is there's not much. And uh, the only nice thing that I can uh, tell you uh, besides if, if you haven't noticed is the new UI that is given to us down below. You can actually see the soul shards, how many soul shards you have, and when you can use them and so forth, which is pretty cool. Um, but with that, there's really nothing else to say about Affliction Warlock abilities. So let's go ahead and take a look at the artifact weapon. First, looking at the artifact weapon ability, and I'm trying to make sure that I create souls around me so that you guys can see. Um, but basically, the artifact weapon ability is Reap Souls. Consume all tormented souls collected by Uthalesh, increasing your damage by 10% and doubling the effect of all Uthalesh's other traits for 5 seconds per soul consume. Uthalesh collects tormented souls from each target you kill and occasionally escapes souls it previously. Oh my gosh, kill. <laughs> Ulthalesh Ul collects tormented souls from each target you kill and occasionally escapes escaped souls it previ previously collected. So this is going to play into how you do your damage, okay? So this is actually pretty cool. That's how that's something that's gonna change in how you play, is you're gonna have to be dealing with this uh reap souls part of um it, part of the artifact weapon. So this will be a definitely a major change into how you play as an Affliction Warlock. Yes, you don't have Haunt anymore, um, and you're not going to be using Soul Burn, but instead you got this little mechanic with Reap Souls and how you're just kind of bringing souls into yourself to increase your damage and, uh, you know, uh, increase your other abilities. And you know what? I, well, I lost it right there, but uh, let me pop some more souls out just do some more damage and get some more souls out and then I'll uh, I'm gonna hover over the tooltip so you guys can actually see uh, before we move into the talent tree for uh, before we move into the talent tree for uh, an affliction warlock so let me get some soul I'm odd I could not get any souls before okay there we go 
increases the damage done by 10% and doubles the effectiveness of other traits of the Deadwind Harvester. So, there you go. Uh, so, with that, let's go ahead and look at... And there's no cooldown on it. As you can see, I can keep grabbing souls. And actually, uh, four stacks right here... Oh, wait, that's sorry, that's compounding order. No, here, here it is. Increases your damage by 10%. So, there you go. Uh, I was looking at the wrong item, so excuse me for that. But, let's go ahead and look at Ulthalesh, the Deadwind Harvester. Uh, you will be starting in the middle here. Here's Reap Souls. So this is where you'll be starting. And you'll work your way around the tree uh, to all these different talents. You have three Epic Forgers, which are really the good ones. That's what you want uh, to be able to... Uh, those are the uh, abilities that you really want, because those are the fun ones. The rest of them are kind of like basic... You know, damage increases and so forth. So let's actually go ahead and start at the bottom, and then I'll work my way, you know, in a, in a, you know, kind of an arc around, uh, from the bottom all the way in an arc around to the right hand side. So starting with the very bottom, we have Wrath of Consumption. It's a passive. After you kill a target, your damage over time effects deal two percent increased damage for the next twenty seconds, stacking up to five times. Uh, I, I don't really, you know, I for PVE and PVP, I really don't like this. Uh, it maybe it'll be really nice for maybe dungeon raiding, but uh, to be honest, I really just don't. I'm not a big fan of this ability right here. I feel like they could do better. Uh, we have hideous corruption increases the damage dealt by corruption by 12%. That's three ranks, so you have four percent per rank. There is perdition increases the critical strike damage dealt by agony, corruption, drain life, and unstable affliction by 10%. Three ranks, so that'll be like three, six, and ten, three, seven, and ten. Um, that's basically increasing the critical strike chance on all your important abilities. You have shadowy incantations. Increases the shadow damage you deal by 3%. That's 3 ranks, so 1% per rank. There's sweet souls. Your health stone heals you for an additional 50% of your maximum health. Any party or raid member using a health stone also heals you for the amount they were healed. So uh, if you're in a raid and you've dished out your health stones properly, uh, you can get a lot of healing from sweet souls. <laughs> Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, your other, your next epic portrait here is when you kill a target, its soul bursts into flames, dealing 33,000 shadow flame damage to all nearby enemies. Shadow flame, of course, being shadow damage plus uh, fire damage. Uh, once again, when you kill a target, I feel like Affliction may be a great uh, spec to be able to go around, at least with the artifact weapon, uh, is a great spec to go around and level with, but, um, but, trust me, when you're leveling with this, uh, when you're leveling, you may hit one epic portrait. Um, you won't hit two. Uh, you'd be really lucky to hit two. So this is, you know, it, it, I don't know how this is going to work out. Well, we will have to see, um, maybe I am misreading this and this is actually going to be actually really good. Uh, I can see in AoE fights these abilities becoming very powerful uh, in an AoE raid fight or an AoE dungeon boss fight, but in PvP I just don't see the use out of them at all. We have a long dark night of the soul. Increases the healing you receive from drain life by 30%, 3 ranks, 10% per rank. We have crystalline shadows. This is the first one you will get, and it increases shadow damage by 2%. That's really tiny. We have Inherently Unstable, increases the critical strike chance of Unstable Affliction by 6%, that'll be 2% per rank. We have Compounding Horror, each time Agony and Corruption deal damage, they have a 10% chance to increase the damage dealt by your next Unstable Affliction by 5%, stacking up to 5, uh, stacking up to 5 times. This is what I've seen, uh, this is what I was accidentally reading off earlier, um, sorry was it, uh, Agony and Corruption, excuse me. Let me go ahead and pop these here, and let it deal damage, and it should be every time it ticks, it has a chance to, uh, do this here. Uh, 10% chance per tick, so, let's go ahead and let them tick here, and see if we can get it to show up again. Now it's, now it's not gonna show up now that I'm actually doing this, which is annoying. So, uh, we're gonna see here if we can get, uh, compounding horror to actually show up for us. In fact, I'm just going to uh, cheat and use it on different targets. Um, get stuff built up. There we go. We got one tick right here. Compounding where your next unstable affliction deals 10% increased damage. And so, 3%. So, if you want, you can kind of wait for your unstable affliction until it goes down. 
but I feel like that would be something that you would do if you were having trouble with soul shards. But it seems like you're never going to have trouble with soul shards, so, you know, put it up when you can. Uh, I'm not sure if when you refresh it will, like, cancel out. So right now I was dealing, uh, I missed it there. Um, I'm not quite sure how that's going to work out, to be honest. I'm not an expert on that, on how this ability specifically will play into Unstable Affliction, whether you're refreshing Unstable Affliction to keep that damage, or whether you'll have to restart over again. And then on top of that, you have Unleashed Souls as well to deal with. Uh, so, there's a lot there. Uh, there's a lot of different passive buffs going left and right uh, that are uh, personally confusing me a lot on how they would work, and I'm sorry I cannot give it to you real clearly, I will just give you the information and hopefully the theory crafters will be able to figure it out, uh, they will give you a proper rotation on how to really deal damage effectively with an Affliction Warlock, uh, because this is, this is flying a little over my head in terms of, you know, whether or not, uh, when you use, uh, un Unstable Affliction, depending on how many stacks of Compounding Horror you have, or how many, uh, souls you have reaped, uh, it's 10% and increases uh, 5 seconds per soul consumed. So you want to make sure you always have reaped souls up when you do stuff, but then compounding horror really changes, you know, when you actually use Unstable Infliction and whether or not you're going to, are you going to lose damage uh, because you waited a little bit to maybe get 5 stacks of compounding horror before you use Unstable Infliction, or should you just always have uh, unstable affliction uh, up at all times and then there's the question of whether or not if you do get five stacks of unstable affliction does that uh, refresh uh, does that damage coefficient or whatever it's at refresh if I use unstable affliction on top of that or does it rewrite that unstable affliction and do it over so that's something that I'm not uh, sure about but I just want to give you all the information out there so you guys understand uh, so that you guys know what's going on, and the Theory Crafters will get down to what really makes a difference there. Here we have Seeds of Doom, increases the damage dealt by Seed when Seed of Corruption explodes by 15%. A good old Seed of Corruption, I haven't used that yet, but it's still, still Seed of Corruption. Uh, we have in, in, oh my gosh, Imitable Agony? <laughs> I can't even pronounce that, in, Inimitable agony um, I, I don't even know if that is how it's supposed to um, how it's supposed to work I, I if that's a typo or not I've never seen that word before I'm sorry inimitable inimitable agony increases the damage dealt by agony by 12% that's three ranks 4% per rank um, we have it drained to a husk increases the damage dealt by drain life by 6% that's 2% per rank we have Shadows of the Flesh, increases the damage, the amount absorbed by Soul Leech by 3%, so it's 1% per rank, and that's kind of your defensive shield. And then you have Fatal Echoes, when Unstable Affliction expires, it has a 6% chance to reapply itself. So that's something you got to take into note um, with your Unstable Affliction, but to be honest, you know, with, you know, your, I mean, yeah, you, you want to be able to just continue to use Drain Life, because Drain Life does a lot of damage. But at the same time, like, uh, you know, if you're not really running out of soul shards, you know, it's not a big deal uh, if you have to reapply unstable affliction. And the last one is Harvester of Souls. Each time Corruption deals damage, it has a 15% chance to deal 14,000 shadow damage to the target and heal you for 100% of the damage dealt. Um, let's see if we can get that to work. The Seed of Corruption is a great way of just putting, uh, of putting uh, Corruption on everyone. So let's go ahead and explode it there and then we'll see what we get out of it here um, with that ability see if we can get any explosions out of it I'm not seeing anything at the moment but um, that is your final epic trait uh, in Ulathesh Ulth Ulthalesh the Deadwind Hunter this is the worst video I've ever had trying to pronounce these absurd um, <laughs> names for an Affliction Warlock so um, one minor thing, well, anyway, maybe a major thing to people that I forgot to announce is that it, there's no longer a good display over the, your back shoulders on your soul shards. Um, I mean, I guess the good thing is that, uh, they now have that display down below, uh, that actually tells you how many soul shards you have, uh, 
as you can see right below my feet there you can see the new uh, health bar and whatnot and I just gained a soul shard right there so that's pretty cool but um, they no longer have the cool over the shoulder icons which is what I thought was a really cool visual so that's everything with uh, Affliction Warlock I'm sorry if you're an Affliction Warlock and you're kinda disappointed on what's coming at you uh, if you were uh, a big fan of how Affliction Warlocks worked I think back in BC and Wrath of Lich King I think you're going to be very happy with how Affliction Warlocks are otherwise um, times are changing and uh, you know they have changed the play style of an Affliction Warlock if there were very few changes to the actual abilities uh, they removed several abilities and then added uh, the artifact weapon and then that artifact weapon trait which really kind of changes how you kind of function as an Affliction Warlock. So, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and in the next video, we will take a look at the PvE and PvP talents for an Affliction Warlock. So, uh, from the Dead Dread Scar Rift, I'll see you guys later. Tear us out.